Welcome to our Monday evening of Holy Week, April 6, 2020, Compline service. This is a, a spoken service that we will speak a, a lot of it responsively. So hopefully you have uh, downloaded um, that uh, bulletin from our website. Um, if not, uh, you know, uh, you can still follow along in the hymnal, though some of the responsive parts aren't going to be marked properly or not as we're doing them uh, this evening for our prayer. We're going to do these since we can't gather in the church. We're going to do these almost as if we're doing it for family devotions at, at home is going to be our the way that we're going to do it. And so uh, just follow along the best that uh, you can. And again, just imagine that we're sitting around the table together doing this service at Compline. Again, page 253. Uh, in your hymnal, or uh, we'll start at the front of your bulletin that you downloaded off the internet. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Well, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another to pause as we consider our need for God's forgiveness. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. We rest now in his peace and rise in the morning to serve him. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 36. Again, it is pointed for this Monday of Holy Week, and we will read responsively uh, verses 5 through 10. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heaven, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like the great deep. Man and beast you save, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God! The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. O continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your righteousness to the upright of heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading comes from John chapter 12, verses 1 through 23. It was a reading that we actually had at Zion this last uh, Sunday. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner there for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him at the table. Mary therefore took a pound of exp expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold? for 300 denarii and given to the poor. And he said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, and having charged the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. Well, the next day, 
The large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, so they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard that he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus, and Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. The Responsory Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so you essential oil junkies out there are going to love this one. Because what is pure nard? That's what the text tells us, by the way, that Mary uses to clean Jesus' stinky feet. That along with her hair, she uses this, this pure nard. A whole pound of the ointment made from pure nard. Not diluted nard. Not a knockoff nard. Not synthetic. Nope. Pure nard. Well, let me tell you a little bit about it. It comes from a plant that is grown in the Himalayas of Nepal and China and India. All right? It's made uh, from the rhizomes, or you could say the underground stems of the plant. Mary, you see, does not live anywhere near where this you know, pure nard is produced. It had to be imported in from somewhere. Somebody had to carry it, bring it here. And so what Judas is saying is absolutely right. This is expensive stuff. He says it's worth 300 denarii. You know, so in other words, like two thirds of a year's wages. Now, I'm sure that everyone there is thinking, well, we know how Mary was able to afford this stuff. We know what kind of woman this is. Of course, that is why she is there. She has been using this expensive ointment to cover the gross smell of her life. Now, isn't that what we like to do as well? I mean, look at us just even physically, let's say, all right? For the physical part of what we, we have, we have deodorants, we have perfumes, there's, there's makeup, fancy clothes that we'll put on, jewelry. We like to cover up what we see. With, it's never good enough for us. For the sinful part as well, what do we have? We have excuses, blaming, avoidances, lies, defaming. You see, we like to cover things up. We like to put on a whole lot of stink so that maybe we won't smell like death, the death that we are. Yet we know that the Lord who judges sees the secret heart of man and knows what is in secret. Jesus emphasizes that in the text where he talks about praying to the Lord. He says, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Now, Jesus is emphasizing that the Lord sees all, everything about you. 
you know, so we might be able to deceive our, our neighbor, right? So they think that, you know, we're doing okay. We might be able to deceive our family. We, we might be able to deceive our pastor. But we cannot deceive God. He knows what's going on inside of you. Well, staying in secret will no longer work for Mary. It's time to put this nard to good use. So she says to herself, I will anoint the feet of my Savior. Now, she realizes that when she whips out this grossly expensive ointment, everyone's going to know that she's got it. The aroma is going to fill the house. And it might make the house smell good, but it's also going to remind everybody there the things that Mary has done. This is that perfume that she uses. Now, Mary knows something that many Christians miss out on. I'm not going to need to cover up anymore, she says. He will take away my foulness. He will give me new life and a new aroma. Now, while this perfume might fill this house with a pleasing aroma to the noses of men, this Lord and Savior, who I anoint with my sinful life, has come to be the pleasing aroma for me to the Lord. His blood will speak to the Father on my behalf and will call me blessed. Well, so it is with us as well. God sent his son into the world to cover the stench of our sins. Christ's atoning sacrifice on the cross is pleasing to the Father and sets our record straight. His cross and suffering were given that in him we might be saved. Now, there are those who will not have anything to do with this, those that point an accusing finger at Mary when she honors her Savior, those are the ones who like to cover up their own sin with claims of righteousness, saying, at least I'm not like that sinner over there. Or they try to show that it's, it's a waste of time to be repentant, saying, God would not waste such a thing on this. You see, Judas has the problem of caring more about himself and his fortune and his pride. But this is what we suffer from as well. When we despise our, our baptismal regeneration by returning to sin or by refusing to forgive those who have sinned against us, this is the same as the intent of the chief priests who were so incensed against the grace of Christ that they were willing to kill Jesus and put to death a man whom Jesus just raised from the dead, Lazarus, just to prove that they were right, he was wrong. They're so set upon proving themselves right, they're going to ignore this great gift that has just been given. So we also should not like act like we are good of ourselves, nor should we withhold that goodness of Christ from others. Instead, we should bask in the forgiveness of Christ. Like everyone in that room with Mary, we should lavish it upon others like Mary did with the feet of Jesus. What is the cost to us? If we admit our sins, Christ, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we are faithful in delivering forgiveness to others, then we have won our brother back. You see, so whatever it is, whether we are boldly confessing our sins to God and, and confessing to one or the other, or, or even giving boldly the forgiveness of sins, maybe we don't want to give to somebody else. You see, in this lavish gift of Christ poured on us, there's no loss. Our sins are gone and we gain our brother. It is a blessing either way. This is why this is the greatest gift of all time. It brings people from all about. These foreign Greeks even come and say to the people, we wish to see Jesus. Oh, you are going to see him. You will see him tortured, crucified, died and buried. You will also see him in the resurrection. He has come to make himself known to man. And this is why he says the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified. And he is still glorified today. In the washing of rebirth and renewal in the Holy Spirit. He is glorified in the reading of his word, in the prayer, and in the praise. He is glorified in the breaking of the bread every time we gather at his altar. He is glorified because this is the will of the Father who sent him, that he would become the salvation of all men. So let's let's stink up the place a little bit. Let's not be afraid to boldly confess our sins to God and to one another. Let us lavish this pleasing aroma of the Father on 
others for giving their sins as well. Let us keep this essential gift given to us, not the essential oil of nard that Mary had, but the essential gift of Christ that God has poured out on us. And by pouring it out on us, he has made us a pleasing aroma for the blood of his son washes away sin and is pleasing to the Father. This, of course, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds on Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. We continue with our prayers. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Almighty and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of your dear Son and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us that with good and honest hearts we may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith. We humbly implore you to rule and govern your church throughout the world. Bless all those who proclaim your truth that we may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word and that faith in you may be strengthened, love towards others increased, and your kingdom extended. Send forth labors into your harvest and sustain those whom you have sent that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people and the gospel preached in all the world. Grant health and prosperity to all who are in authority, especially to the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Grant them grace to rule according to your good pleasure for the maintenance of righteousness and the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. According to your good pleasure, turn the hearts of our enemies and adversaries that they may cease their hostilities and walk with us in meekness and peace. Comfort, O God, with your Holy Spirit, all who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity. Grant courage and steadfastness, especially to those who suffer you for your name's sake, that they may receive and accept their afflictions in confidence that you will acknowledge them as your own. Although we have deserved your righteous wrath and punishment yet we ask you O merciful father not to remember the sins of our youth nor our many transgressions out of your unspeakable goodness and mercy defend us from all harm and danger to body and soul preserve us from false doctrine from war and bloodshed from plague and pestilence from all calamity by fire and water from all hail and tempest from failure of harvest and from famine from anguish of heart and despair of your mercy and from an evil death and every time of trouble, show yourself a very present help, the Savior of all, especially to those who believe. Cause all needed fruits of the earth to prosper, that we may enjoy them in due season. Give success to the Christian training of the young, to all lawful occupations on land, sea, and air, and to all pure arts and useful knowledge, crowning them with your blessing. Receive, O God, our bodies and souls and all our talents, together with the offerings we bring you. For by his blood your Son has purchased us to be your own, we may live under him in his kingdom. These and whatsoever other things you would have us ask of you, O God, grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We speak responsibly the Nunc Dimittis. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me for this uh, compline service. Again, uh, we are doing this as if we are having uh, family devotions together around the table at home. And so I hope that uh, you, were, you were able to enjoy us. I hope that this is coming to you in, in a good fashion. Uh, please, we love your feedback to make sure that we know that we're getting this out to you. Uh, in the meantime, God's richest blessings upon you. Uh, we ask him to continue to bless you during this time that we are not able to be with one another. Now, have a quiet night's rest in Christ's name. Amen.